a good point for anybody to ask any questions about that particular colour grader because that's kind of the cornerstone of all the grading you're going to do in Final Cut Pro. Everything that does, other colour grading systems do as well. There's nothing in there that's particularly special, um, apart from some extra tools I'll show you later. Um, yes? Um, you can get some really interesting effects doing that um, and yes, we, um, there is a broadcast safe filter and it's designed for doing that. It clamps levels to fix things and yes, it will work. So let's demonstrate. I'm, I'm happy to make this a little bit more interactive rather than me just kind of throwing information at you because I might be telling you things you already know. Okay, if I just pull up the broadcast safe which is under where are we? Colour correction. Bang. There it is. We'll just put it to normal. And then we'll crank that white level up. Now it's clamping the white level. It's also clamping chroma levels and it's also cramping what's known as RGB levels, which are the bottom ones down there. That, because that's another argument. When you, with these days with digital transmission, and the way they monitor it, that's fairly critical. Let's lift that white level up. Now I've taken that up as far as it'll go. And if we go back and have a look at the scopes, our legaliser has clamped that. It's just knocked out anything over 100. Sorry, I'm walking away from the mic there, but it's knocked out anything over 100. It'll clamp black levels and the RGB will make sure you don't have any colour in the white and make sure you don't have any colour in the black. It'll clamp those things so it won't go illegal. So yes, you can use that for an effect. <clears throat> It's a really good question because I use all the different settings. Um, it depends upon what the problem is. Um, you may have heard of a thing called gamut errors. Um, what gamut errors are are really, there are certain limits to the way the television signal can be for a broadcaster. It's simply that certain signals will upset the transmitter. It's all about the transmitter. And without getting into a long explanation of how that works, they generally transmit the signal inverted. So maximum, uh, maximum transmitter broadcast is not white, it's black. Which means that white is to transmit her off and that's why I can't have any colour in there. That's why once you, if you oversaturate the top end, it causes problems in the technical part of the transmission chain. It's not something, it's not an aesthetic thing, it's not because people want to make your life difficult, it's because it could shut down the transmitter. <laughs> the transmitter will detect it and say, oh, freak out. They don't want that. And it also makes the transmission signal unstable. Um, which I did, is not answering your question yet. When you have very, very saturated colours, and I think I might have one here that would work as an example. Uh, yeah, one of these ones will. Got some guys in yellow shirts. Here we go. I actually prepared this for something else, but... That yellow is um, kind of interesting because it's very saturated. Now, if I grade this up and crank the saturation, see if it's going to do it for me. Uh, no. Because I've got a safe filter on it. There you go. Now, the, the thing to look at here is our vector scope, which is the top left corner, which is showing us a range of hues in the angle of the vector scope. You've got six little boxes, which are where the colour bars are represented. And then you've got the signal. So this is showing a saturation is the distance from the centre to the outside, hue in a circular pattern. Now you can see there, if you look at the top left, it's hitting a line there, it's hitting an edge. That's seriously out of broadcast safe. And you can see it in the other signals too. Now, the reason this kind of thing is a problem is because yellow is a very bright colour. 
you think about where it sits in the colour bar signal, it's right next to white. It has an extremely high brightness. Now, you put a high saturation onto that, because it's up there in the white level, it can go way beyond broadcast. Bright colours like yellow are a problem for that reason. Um, those kind of colours are the ones that the legaliser will deal with best. Even though we'll deal with everything, that's the one that really fixes nicely. So I've just selected a normal setting, standard out of the box, and hit the button. Now you can, I don't know if you can see it on the projector, but it desaturates a little bit those shirts. Yeah, you can see it. You can see what it's doing. And if you have a look at the signal before and after, right, bang, it's clamping it. If you notice very carefully, the, the luminance level on the waveform monitor bottom left it's not clipped. It's not hitting a line and then clipping it off and cropping it off. It pulls it down. All the detail is there. You don't lose any detail. Even though the visual effect is a certain loss of detail. And that's because it's having to do a combination luminance and chroma clamp. So the detail in the shirts tends to lose contrast. So it's a contrast problem. So then for that reason, then this may answer part of your question that you don't know you wanted to ask yet, <laughs> is I quite often grade with the broadcast filter in place so I can see the results of it while I'm doing the grade. Otherwise, you can slap that thing on and everything goes pear-shaped, especially with those kind of colours. Yes? Um, yes. So you have a yeah. then you actually try and just I generally grade without having the legaliser filters on because I'm um, <laughs> a little bit old school. In I like to know what's going on with the signal. Um, the order that you have filters stacked up in Final Cut Pro is the order that they render in. Right, yeah. So the order that they're in there makes a difference. So normally I will do a grade pass and then I'll legalise things. Yeah, and then I'll put the broadcast filter on and then I'll come back and, and review the things that I've legalised. I also quite often legalise entire programs by nesting a sequence into another sequence and then just throwing a legaliser on it. There's a very good reason for doing it that way, which I'll touch on later. Um, okay, we're pretty much cover the intro. The effects rendering order, this is kind of intriguing. I haven't really got it prepped yet, but I can demonstrate that in a moment. Let's go to one of these other clips. I've got a bunch of things on. See if I've got other filters on this. This is a really, really good example of real world grading. That was straight out of the camera. Um, fixing camera problems is the thing you're going to be doing most. Exposure problems, camera problems. A lot of the modern HD cameras are very, very good. But what you find is the, the gamma curve tends to make everything look a bit crushed and dark and you want to kind of lighten things up and have it look a little bit more normal like, like you would do if you were running film through a telecine chain. Same kind of thing, you're adjusting all those exposure issues and you can see the kind of effect you can get and it's a very simple adjustment, you're just pushing things around a little bit. 